It's time for this week's Prairie Cast. This week's Prairie Cast is brought to you by Delta Dental of Iowa, who reminds you that you don't have to work for a big company to get big benefits. Delta Dental offers a dental plan to fit your needs. Whether it is a single policy, one for your family, or one for the team at your startup, visit DeltaDentalIA.com to learn more about your many plan options. Hi there, and welcome to episode 69 of PrairieCast for January 10th, 2012. I'm Jeff Wood with Silicon Prairie News. This is Andy Brucco of 48 Web, and we are your hosts. Our guests today are Tej Dewan of Startup City, Des Moines, and Emma Peterson of Tickley. How are both of you doing today? Pretty awesome. I'm doing very well. How are you, Jeff? Good. Good. Andy? I'm great. Good. Did awesome. you? Did any of you guys take the skywalk today, or did you walk outside? Outside. I mean, we're in Iowa, right? We got to talk about weather. <laughs> yeah. We are, yeah, we should, and it's it's beautiful out. Although, it's too awesome. I have not really been outside since I uh, came in, uh, but it's almost too hot in here, I think, because it's hot, hot outside. Mm-hmm. Well, so. you know, a, a little walk in about half hour, 45 minutes would be pretty good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I got my coffee iced. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's summertime uh-huh. in January. <laughs> uh, anything new going on at Startup City we should know about? Uh, a lot. Actually, we just had a fabulous uh, lunch and learn with uh, Chris Sieberling from Etc. Graphics. Uh, just talking about brand management and so on. It, it, it was a pretty good session. Good. Yeah, and you guys are doing a lot of educational sessions. I, I see it's, them across on Twitter. It's, it's, it's fun. You know, just you go in thinking one thing. And like today, I, I went in thinking ad branding logos and whatnot. And conversation went toward accounting practices, mm-hmm. global accounting practices and whatnot related to brands and trademarks. So you never know what you're going to get into, but it, it's, it's fun. It's fun to learn. Nice, nice. And if people want to participate in those, it's not just for Startup City members. No, no, no. no. Uh, all you need to do is hit Startup City DSM website. Uh, there's events uh, listed up there. Uh, sign up. Uh, there are some events that have uh, limited seating because because the speakers are popular. <laughs> sure. uh, so sign up early. Uh, yeah, there's, there's nothing, uh, no filter per se. Okay. Well, very good. And you can Every see, I think I, there's a list of those on your website now. That people there can is. Check out. There is. Yep. Very good. Emma, what's new at Tickly? <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of stuff. Um, as you know, we have our January deadlines uh, set for both Brian and I about getting our software launched. So in February, we're going to have a bit of a party. Nice. Uh, so I don't know what day. I'm pretty sure I know where. But there will be T-shirts and fun and a new software launch. And so very you're, good. you're invited. Awesome. I would like to come. February's not very far away. You know it's not. <laughs> no. No. Um, no. Brian's hammering away. Uh, he brought his headphones today to the office so he could listen to his business partners on PrairieCast. But um, we're, it's, it's looking so good. I mean, good. it's there's a lot of, I guess, feelings of pride that happen when I'm looking at everything that he has accomplished and where we're headed and the items we've chosen to integrate and representation of other startups within what we're up to. So. Nice. And yeah. you, this is kind of a second version, like an, a new yeah, interface I mean, and we're you design the product. Mm-hmm. So. We're selling tickets right now. We just launched the Bar Camp Cedar Valley. so Which is a, in Cedar, Cedar Falls. Falls. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because there's a Bar Camp Iowa City Cedar Rapids coming up too, I think. Mm-hmm. Are you doing their tickets? Not yet. You probably should be. <laughs> but and I know they like to watch this show. Um, so. <laughs> yeah. No. We're doing the Cedar Valley one and it's on the UNI campus, which is a lot of fun for me since I went to school at UNI. So it's our first event on campus. Very good. But, yep. Well, and Andy, everything's good uh, with you, I think. Oh, yeah. Anything? Nothing to announce quite yet. Nothing to announce. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we should probably just jump into uh, uh, the stories of the week. And the first one is a story that I know Emma is very, very excited about. Um, it's a Startup Weekend love story. And I don't just uh-huh. say that because you're the resident girl. I know. I like, that kind of makes you look a little. I know. I didn't, didn't <laughs> hear that. Just, we talked about it before the show, uh, uh, the story. But um, uh, Kenny Younger, which many of us know here in Des Moines, and Shannon Thomas, who both met last year at Startup Weekend Des Moines, which I think was in March, mm-hmm. um, are now engaged to be married. And we, we ran a story about this that, that Michael wrote that was really good this week. It's getting a lot of play, I think, because um, it's just – not something you traditionally see at people who meet at Startup Weekend and get to. At least you don't see it around here until now. So, um, yeah, I thought it was really interesting. And, and uh, you know, you've known Kenny probably mm-hmm. longer than the rest of us. So. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's a great story. And, and, and knowing Kenny, I was, I kind of knew he was going to do it beforehand a little. He kind of hinted at it, but um, 
still surprised that it went down and very cool. Um, but I remember that day. I remember that, that at startup weekend that night when he was kind of over there talking to her. I was like, who? What's he doing talking to her? And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, then, Falling in love. Yeah. Falling <laughs> in love. And a lot of us didn't know Shannon because she lives in Iowa City. Right. Yeah. For I was like, who, weekend, who's so. that girl Kenny's talking to? What's going on? And well, that's what was happening. That's what was happening. <laughs> yeah, and Kenny used to actually sit in this office with us, actually right where this desk is, mm-hmm. I think, was Kenny's office um, back in the day. So that, I think it's it's kind of a fun story I want to talk about here. Tej, any, any thoughts on? I All I can think of is uh, you're going to have a series coming up, Love at First Pitch, and <laughs> see, <laughs> see who pitches next and falls in love. So yeah, let's, abs- let's wait a couple more months and see where this story can go. Yeah. <laughs> Version two, right? <laughs> Definitely. The and that's what he said in the story that I thought was really interesting. We were just talking about this, that, that it was her pitch, like the end of the weekend pitch for what, Fundle, which was the company. I don't think there, is Fundle still around? Mm-hmm. I don't think Shannon's involved. It's Mike's cer- doing it, right? it certainly is uh, around, I think. I think it's... There's lots of prospect for Fundle still. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Well, she was doing the Fundle pitch at the end of the weekend. And, yeah. and Which won best pitch? It won best pitch. It didn't place in the competition, right. like first, second, <laughs> or third, but it won best pitch. And Kenny said uh, in the story that she just totally rocked the pitch, and it was amazing. I was like, I'm totally asking her out now. <laughs> so I've not heard that happen a, a whole lot, but <laughs> it's kind of, kind of a good part of the story. Sweet. I love, I love that uh, Andrew just said, I was on Shannon's team and gave Kenny a ride home. He was super pumped to have gotten her number. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sure Kenny appreciates us talking about uh-huh. it this way, too. So, um, we her, her so what was the restaurant? Her Twitter handle. Oh, yeah. Which, which restaurant did they uh, meet up at? That I don't know because she was taking off. That was part of the story. Like she was leaving to go back to Iowa City, and Kenny was trying to get her to go out that night. But it sounds like she didn't go out, but you got cool. her number and, and was totally pumped for it. Um, the other kind of thought I had there is that, you know, Startup Weekend is something that we've covered a lot on mm-hmm. Silicon Prairie News and been to several in all the different cities, and they're happening. Uh, Iowa City, and I would imagine Cedar Falls will probably have one soon. Columbia, Missouri had one. But um, a lot of the Startup Weekend companies uh, don't survive Startup Weekend. They, they, they kind of happen there, and people kind of filter out and get excited about other things. But what Startup Weekend, I think, is really known for is co-founder dating, and that's that type of thing of you get to experience what it's like to work with someone and not necessarily more people meet at Startup Weekends and found companies later than companies that survive. And, and in this case, um, the people met and it was real life dating. How's that? I love love. You so. love? <laughs> all very exciting. So are you going to get married at the next Startup Weekend then? Or? <coughs> married at the next Startup Weekend? Well, no. <laughs> I'm going to have to. <laughs> Two months. You only got a couple of months. <laughs> um, you know, I might fall in love at the next Startup Weekend, but I also... You know, might not. So <laughs> yeah. I guess I'll have to go and find out. And you're the, we, he asked you that because you're the only single person right. on the panel, not because yes. you're female. Oh, but, uh, yeah. that, That's where that comes from. That's a good point. Um, You know, maybe. Um, We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that'd be kind of hilarious. Yeah. If <laughs> irony that I'm the one that comes in here. I'm like, what are we going to talk about? <laughs> now I'm like, you guys got to talk about my startup weekend love story. <laughs> Well, if you have one of those stories, we will be sure and talk yeah, about it in the I'll future. I'll keep you posted. But in related <laughs> Startup Weekend news, John, and I, I will say this, uh, I apologize before I say this, Schnipkowit, did you guys see? John? I've met John several times. I just don't know how to pronounce his last name. But announced this week that he's leaving his job as the CTO of Ovation Networks to pursue the Startup Weekend Iowa City project uh, full time. So the company's called RecBob, R-E-C-B-O-B, uh, and they, I think, placed second or third at Startup Week in Iowa City, which Shannon helped organize. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and Ovation Networks is a very like successful company in Cedar Rapids that John's had for 10 or 12 years that he helped co-found. And now he sold his shares to his partner, and he's doing RecBob full-time, and not just alone, but he's bringing two other people on with him full-time and, and two others part-time. So... Uh, I talk about Startup Weekend um, projects not going forward, but, but Rec Bob certainly is one that it, that is. So that's that's exciting. I know that he's been thinking about that for a while. I'm pumped about what's coming up that first weekend, I think, in March. Should be pretty cool. Yeah, the, for the next Startup Weekend in Des Moines. Mm-hmm. And that's yep. going to be hosted at Startup City? At Startup City, yeah. This yeah. <laughs> it's going to take logistics to a completely <laughs> new level for us. <laughs> We've had 50 people uh, for an event. We've had 140 for... Uh, the ribbon cutting. Mm-hmm. I think Startup Weekend this year is going to go higher than that. That was my prediction last week. Yeah. That Startup Weekend. Was my, yeah. my 2012 prediction is that we're going to blow the top off Startup City at Startup Weekend. Oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> we're going to need more refrigerators. <laughs> uh, you're going to need more trash cans. And trash cans. <laughs> uh, and Tej, just so you know, uh, Michael says that it was Cafe de Scala that he rented out. Ah, beautiful. He usually closed on Wednesday, Wednesdays, so that's why he uh, rented it out. Man's Aww. got good taste. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> there's some good chat if you're not <laughs> if you're watching live here of what's going on with Emma's love story. So, um, or <laughs> would be love story coming up for March third. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Emma, you're blushing. Well, you never know. <laughs> I, I just think it's gonna be super ironic and hilarious if I end up. Falling in love at Startup Weekend. I mean, because in a year from now or whatever, we'll be having this conversation. Mm -hmm. Like, you're engaged and you met at Startup Weekend. <laughs> and remember when you were laughing at us? So, getting a little nervous. It's true. It's all right. <laughs> it's like catching the bouquets to, mm -hmm. to, to, to question the, the story about Gosh. Startup Weekend love. Uh, <laughs> not that you did that. But, yeah, so kind of interesting, interesting story. But kind of the moral of it all is congratulations to Kenny and Shannon. Excited Absolutely. to see both both really nice people and, and uh, glad they found each other and are, I guess, moving forward in their life together. So mm -hmm. um, do want to give thanks, uh, as we do after the first story every week, to our sponsor, Delta Dental of Iowa, that allows us to do this show and the production upgrades and things that, uh, that we have here. So when it comes to taking care of your smile, rely on a company you can trust. Fact is, more Iowans trust their smiles to Delta Dental. Whether you're looking for a dental policy for you, your family, especially new families being created like at Startup Weekend <laughs> or your startup, visit deltadentalia.com to learn more about your money plan options. Uh, thanks again for supporting Silicon Prairie News, Prairie Cast, and all the things that we do as entrepreneurs here in Iowa. All right, next story this week. Dusty Reynolds, who is the new Director of Entrepreneurship and Innovation for the Omaha Chamber, wrote a guest post for us on Sunday asking the question of can entrepreneurship be taught? And uh, we've had, a, a, I guess, a prior guest on the show, uh, Tom Chapman, who was mm -hmm. the former director of entrepreneurship. Yeah, I didn't know he got, the position got filled. When did that happen? Um, it's been maybe a couple months okay. or six, eight weeks, something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, Tom moved on to Nebraska Global. Dusty is now in the role, and this is the first piece I think that he's written for us. But kind of built it around this idea of um, a class being held at uh, the University of Colorado with the Boulder Digital Works. Um, that I think the class is just called Startup. But um, trying to give you real life expertise um, and, and experience of, of working inside a startup as part of this class. And uh, yeah, just kind of a, an interesting story. And I wanted to get the ta your take. Tej, I know you're very passionate about education at the, the collegiate level. We were talking about that just before the show as well. You're involved at Central College. Um, what do you think? Can entrepreneurship be taught? I don't know if it can be taught, just like nobody can teach me risk management of jumping out of an airplane. I mean, I'll never do that. Uh, and entrepreneurship is a type of risk management, a risk handling activity. Uh, I don't know if it can be taught, but I do think it can be uh, woken up because our education system, you know, from the point you, you're you able to do homework, parents are telling you, do your homework so you can go get a college degree and then go get a job. You know, we're, we're programmed to go get a job. And that forces the ability to create, ability to build, uh, you know, down in the depths. I think classes and experiences can pull that latent feeling and behavior out. I, I do agree with that. Um, I don't know if it can be taught across the board. I mean, I'm, I'm no researcher. There's no MD or PhD or anything, <laughs> D against my name. <laughs> well, mine's uh, barely a Bachelor of Arts, so I, I, I guess I don't have the the educational qualifications to say, but. Well, I, I think Dusty yeah. would, would agree with you because a, a quote that he had in the article, entrepreneurship is to be activated rather than acquired. Yeah. Uh, theories can be taught, certain skills can be acquired, but talent is innate. I, I, and I think I, I may have shared this uh, example before. I, I was in an entrepreneurship class. There's uh, uh, four students in the class and one student who's very passionate about building a business, not a startup, but building a small business for herself. She didn't know where to get started. And, and as we talked more and more, we found out that she was, she was doing custom stained glass. Not only did, did she have the plans to create custom stained glass, she was getting a degree in it. She had a potential customer lined up for the summer. She knew how much they, she was gonna charge for it. She had an advance for the whole thing. All she didn't have was a business plan. Hmm. You're already in business. You don't need to learn how to be in business. You, you've, you've taken care of supply chain through customer. Yeah. All, all in, all in this three-month period, um, you just you just need to change your uh, uh, terminology. So, yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's a latent feeling in many people to start something, build something. It just has to be pulled out. Yeah, I, I would agree with that as well, Emma. You were the most recently in college of any of us. Do you mm -hmm. how do you kind of look at this question? Um, you know, I I think that maybe the drive to be an entrepreneur is 
built out of two things, at least for me personally, which would be, um, well, just whether or not you're a passionate individual, like if you can get really focused and excited about something and see it through, right? And I think that's where that aspect has to be activated, but then circumstance, right? So as far as it being taught, perhaps not, but I think that the business aspects and some of the key pieces of a successful entrepreneur, those are things that, in my opinion, um, oftentimes need to be taught. So mm -hmm. perfect example would be myself, you know, if Mike Caldwell of the biz hadn't been there for me to, you know, say, Emma, <laughs> you know, I know you're afraid of numbers, but let's talk about this and things of that nature. I don't know that we would have gone as far as we have today because he provided me with that, that insight, I suppose. So there's, there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle. And I think that kind of goes to the skills of what mm -hmm. it takes to execute as an entrepreneur, but like mm -hmm. becoming an entrepreneur was more that you, you just kind of had to be in the right place at the right time with this opportunity. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think that I was raised in such a way that it, it's a little bit innate for me to be like, yeah, I can do that, that's fun. And I, I have some friends who would be like, I would never start my own company and that's fine and good. So yeah, I, I don't think it can be taught. Interesting. You, need, you need a support structure, you need, you need your experiences. I mean, I remember having this conversation when I was a full-time employee at principal and coming home one day and saying, you know, I just need to not be an employee. <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, and my wife said, okay, on her salary, we could do our mortgage, we could do our groceries, we could do our utilities. Mm -hmm. Everything else was, you know, could, could wait. Mm -hmm. So we said, let's take these six months and figure it out. Well, we needed two months, figured it out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that was the last job, I guess, I, I ever had. And, you know, so, so you need a support structure, whether, whether it's your wife, whether it's your partner, whether it's your friends, whether it's your community. Mm -hmm. But you either have it in you or it's hidden or it just doesn't exist. If it doesn't exist, don't force yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a lifestyle that's not conducive to everyone. I spoke at um, Simpson today and to an entrepreneurial journalism class, and one of the questions that the professor asked me was, so, you know, if you sell typically, if, you know, if, if somehow, if it fails, right, will you put on a name tag and go to a cubicle and find yourself as an employee again? Is that something you would do? And my response was, well, you know, sure. Like, I don't believe that entrepreneurs are um, the people who are horrible employees, right? I think that that happens every now and then, but I think that you can be just as good as a manager and a boss as you can be an employee, and I think that's probably what divides the good, successful entrepreneurs from the others, is that if you can manage the levels of the whole totem pole, then I think that's a winning combination. That being said, if Tickley's a raging success and everything, I'm going to stick with it, and if it failed, I'd probably just go on to the next cool idea. So. Yeah. yeah, I don't see you in a cubicle. I, I can't yeah, imagine. But, you know, I, I loved working for other people, and it's it's fun as long as it's something cool and interesting for me that I can do it. So, mm -hmm. but you've worked in like video games and music, and you know that's yep. a little different than what are, what are you trying to say, Jeff? <laughs> I think those are a little more <laughs> exciting opportunities than maybe yeah, what no, some others have. For then, sure, for sure. Yeah. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't find myself in a position that I hated, I suppose. But I would hope that most people would attempt to avoid finding themselves in jobs that they completely hate. Yeah. So. Well, you, yeah, you, you would hope. Well, you're, Andy, you, you kind of left the corporate world very quickly after yeah. you started. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't handle it. But uh, <laughs> I think the skills themselves and the practices can be taught. It's all documented. Everybody knows what works. It's do you have mm -hmm. the drive and passion to do it. I mean, I could sit down and learn everything I want about physics. I mean, the rules are there, but I don't want to. I, I have no desire to. I think that's the same with entrepreneurship. If you really want to, you can dive in and do it. But well, and I think not everybody wants to. In the in the post, Dusty kind of compares it to being an athlete. Like you can go to, you know, you can have the best equipment, you can go to the right classes, work with the right trainers. But there are just some people that are driven to be athletes and to compete and have the skills to do mm -hmm. that, like the natural athletic ability, as opposed to people mm -hmm. like me that don't, but me, you know, that type of thing. And yeah. so that, that was actually a really good comparison to kind of think about it. And you, you know, you can try as hard as you want, but it's just not in some people's DNA to be that person. And speaking of DNA, he kind of says there, there are different ways to discover if you have the entrepreneurship gene. 
Um, I think he names three of them. One, immerse yourself in startup culture. Surround yourself with, or sorry, two, surround yourself with honest feedback. And three, read with dirty hands. And, and he explains that as uh, don't treat theory and experience as two separate things. Work the crazy hours, take the risks, and read along the way simultaneously. Kind of read the textbooks and learn from other entrepreneurs as you're going along, but you still have to like jump in. You can't just study it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, which I, I thought were all, all good advice. So I'm excited to see that, that Dusty contributed this to us and see more from him in, in his role at the Omaha Chamber. Uh, personally, uh, I, I, if I may interject, yeah. I think uh, Jacqueline followed up with a pretty awesome comment, yeah, on, comment on that right. article. And for those of you who may not have read the article, uh, read the article. But I think John's comment is pretty right on. Um, it's it oh, was it was right probably comment. the it, it 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 was the ending that was needed. I think. Yeah. So. Yeah, go ahead and read it. It's <coughs> well, the, just the first sentence is, uh, I think there's an innate something inside most entrepreneurs that cannot be taught. The ability to see a problem as an opportunity and then most importantly, figure out a solution is what differentiates it. And that's, yeah. I think that sums up the whole thing pretty good. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, my experience is a little different in that, that I, you know, I went to school, I worked for somebody else like in my first career and then um, went back to school to get an MBA, which I know isn't really vogue for, for the startup world, but, um, not intending to become an entrepreneur, not intending to take any of those classes, but it was the early strategy classes in the MBA that, that really steered me towards entrepreneurship and it kind of like woke up that, that gene type thing. As I looked at the supply chain classes I was taking and the market, those types <laughs> of things, it was the, the strategy which was taught kind of out of the entrepreneurial group that really got that going and really was the point in my life where I decided that I wanted to go that direction. And, and I mean, am I an entrepreneur? Yeah, I mean, we have yeah, you like are. the side projects and things, but I, I, I'm also not like, the passionate leader type of guy. I like being the number two, number three person in the company that's kind of activating on someone else's idea. So, I'm, so you kind of look at those different pieces of it, but, um, w which I think are all important, but it wouldn't have been without those classes, I would have never started that way. So, mm -hmm. so that's kind of where I think it is. And, and, and this, the, at Indiana University where I went back to school, they had some interesting thoughts on this. I actually signed up for a class that was um, the the description of the class was every every reason you don't want to start your own business and it was kind of <laughs> taught by the tenured you know retired professor emeritus of you know I've started all these different startups in my life and here are, you know I lost my wife I did all these things kind of good these are all the reasons we're going to talk about this semester why you don't want to start your own startup business which was really an interesting class true sure. all right any other thoughts on uh, can entrepreneurship be taught no. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Kerbalani does say that despite my lack of athletic ability uh, in the chat room, I would make a good equipment manager for a sports team. So um, I would <laughs> agree. <laughs> Fairy cast set is falling apart. Uh, in the music world, well, I guess in drama, you'd probably just run with that, right? You just like act like we we told that thing to fall down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll work on that. Like, yeah, rock shows. and roll poster. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, third one today. We'll probably keep this show a little bit short, um, uh, but I do want to talk about this. It's actually a post that I wrote back over the holidays, and we just haven't had a chance to get mm -hmm. to it yet. Uh, inspired by a Forbes article that we did talk about, which was the new startup scene uh, from the Silicon Strip to the Silicon Mitten, which I still think is funny, but um, highlighted seven startup hubs around the country, including the Silicon Prairie, and talked about um, kind of what you can learn from Silicon Valley and what that entrepreneurial spirit that is embodied in the word Silicon means and, and how it's applied in different places. That was kind of the jumping off point for this, this article. And, um, and the one that I wrote um, on the Silicon Prairie community is kind of what we're all building, like all of us here collectively in the region. Um, and I had three points in that article. One, uh, that we're not building the next Silicon Valley, that we're building something that I think is unique, but does embody that, that entrepreneurial spirit, but, but it combines it with the things that we really like about this place. Um, at the time, it was you know uh, the, the political knowledge that we all had of, of where we were leading up to the Iowa caucuses, plus uh, you know the, the, the 50 degrees in January temperatures that we always have. You know, those just, that was a joke. No. I got <laughs> nothing, it. Nothing. <laughs> All right, but basically what makes us us. So it's, 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 it's the, uh, the lack of commute, the things that are very characteristic of this place that you wouldn't have in a place like Silicon Valley. That was point number one. Point number two, that we're building a center of innovation, um, the type of place where not only can ideas happen, but you can execute on them, turn them into successful businesses over and over again. Things that you may find in other parts of the country, but you don't necessarily label with this part of the country yet. And then three, that the next phase for the region is um, what we need to do next to progress along this is to get the general public on board. I think the people that watch the show, the people that read the publication, all of us, we kind of know this activity is going on. But um, you know, when I talk to my extended family or when I run into old college friends on the street, they may not know this, these things are happening in Des Moines. So that 
is in, in the other parts of the region. So we need to get more people going. That was kind of the gist of the post. So I just want to get everybody's thoughts on it um, and, and see where you think we are with this and if I was right or if I was wrong and, and where we should go. That's probably the oldest guy in the room. The o fourth point I would add uh, is this isn't something new that's happening around here. Um, I know for, for m my own history, having built a business, uh, selling it back to my partner, uh, I'm not the only one. I mean, I've, I've worked with friends who've built other businesses here, sold them, uh, built, you know, built right back up other technology businesses, sell, sold them again in just the last 15 year period. Mm. Um, we've got the, the recorded successes, uh, whether it was, uh, you know, guys like Don Shane or, or Frank or others who, who've also sold, built and sold businesses. This stuff happens. I think the the difference now is more people are talking about it. Uh, the 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 M and A activity that happened here in the '90s was not as well talked about. You couldn't find it in the register articles then. Now the register is actually actively looking at and talking about some of the activity here. The business record is actively talking about the tech activity. So it's it's been happening. It just is louder and more visible now. And do you think that is signaling something greater, or is that like it's the same as it's been, and we just we just know about it? I would argue it is the same. More people now know about it. Okay. Um, the between social media, between traditional media, between um, the networking events where this the technology activity is talked about just more. It's more amplified uh, because of the number of channels that are talking about it. The, I don't think the the quantity of activity has changed uh, from the late 90s to, to now. Interesting, yeah. and, and I don't know, I was not paying attention at that, that point to what was going on. Um, but I don't disagree, I think that, that that would make a lot, it would be interesting if we had statistics on that too, just to, to kind of know whether there has been an increase, because I would hope that that were at least on Well, think about the, think that. about the one of the largest uh, activities that happened around software. What got me interested in writing and selling software uh, shareware at that time, the 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 style of selling called shareware, not the not not the company shareware. Uh, Parsons Technology out in Hiawatha. Uh, Bob and Martha Parsons ran a company. They sold uh, tons of software through a little pamphlet of a book. Uh, yeah. My first online tax filing was with a software called Personal Tax Edge that I bought for ten bucks. Well, Intuit became successful. They bought PTE, killed their own product, and renamed Personal Tax Edge TurboTax. This is late mm -hmm. '80s. One of the, and that's that's Bob Parsons from GoDaddy. You've seen that's right. That's exactly. Um, they sold more software related to personal graphics design, online Bibles, uh, tax filing software, all kinds of stuff, sitting out just outside Cedar Rapids, and you know that was one of the largest development centers in in the eighties. Uh, so that success, Bob selling, Bob and Martha selling out, moving to Arizona, and then Bob launching GoDaddy. You know that that's just representative story from 30 years ago now so and I know there is uh, you know I've talked with like Christian Gurney about CE software and sure. what, what they were doing and weren't they publicly traded mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. time I don't know the yep. whole history there but so I do know there has been activity in the past so I, I don't want to say that uh, um, nothing has happened or there is no mm -hmm. legacy there and I think there was a comment on the post uh, from someone in Nebraska that was saying the same thing like you don't know the history here if this is the way you're presenting and I, and I don't think that's what we're saying but it does feel different to me now and Maybe that's just my awareness of it and myself, um, but it, well, it seems like there's some sort of momentum. And more different. channels talking about mm -hmm. it. That's, yeah. I think that's hugely different. Uh, 20 years ago, people weren't talking about it in as many channels. I mean, the channels didn't exist, mm -hmm. so, but people weren't talking about it as much. Yeah. So. yeah. Well, I was going to say, as probably the uh, youngest woman here, I, <laughs> if we're supposed to lead with that or not, I would say that um, the Silicon Valley is just a huge game of, I mean, not Valley, Prairie, <laughs> is a huge game of connect the dots, right? I think that um, Tej is completely correct that it's not like this is a brand new world and all of a sudden people are aware of computers in Iowa and it's just taking off in this huge way. I think it's an issue of the fact that these channels exist now for conversations to happen and also people in Iowa who previously perhaps were a little less interested in the tech scene, perhaps a little less excited to be just, you know, I'm an angel uh, investor or I'm a VC, things like that. That's not um, 
we're not really raised in that culture, I wouldn't say. But now those people exist. They're within the downtown Des Moines area. And now that we're just connecting the dots, connecting the right people, having the right conversations, I mean, a lot of us have been here this whole entire time, right? There's not a lot, a ton, I suppose, of people from California that have moved to Iowa and now all of a sudden there's a Silicon Prairie, right? Yeah, I certainly don't think that's that's the case. Um, but no, I, I, I think you're right. It, I think that touches on a whole different piece of, of how insular maybe our communities are here mm-hmm. and, and not full of diversity points of people from different places. But mm-hmm. um, no, I, and, and not just communication, but thinking like kind of the next level through that, I think is also probably community around that. I don't yeah, know certainly. if Parsons Technology back in the day had other, were they doing spinoffs from, like was it kind of building up a community and were there people kind of actively working? Together? Maybe there were, but. the if you, if, you, if you get a chance to go through the, what was the Parsons Dev Center in Hiawatha? It's a huge facility. Yeah. Um, they were not writing all of the software themselves. They were buying some of those packages um, and you know repackaging it under their own names. Um, but I, I, I would argue that even the angel investors existed here. Uh, I know one of my friends was writing a, a, <laughs> a videotape rental uh, application in Pella. Um, in the in the 90s and he was looking for just a little bit of cash to get you know get get just his business licenses and such off the ground and he was able to raise a couple thousand dollars just to get get that hurdle you know he was the developer he wrote all of that code himself wrote it uh, deployed it sold it moved on but he was able to get the investment here in this community um so i'm not saying that des moines is the same place i'm not saying iowa is the same place as it was 20 years ago Technology and startup activity in Iowa is not brand new. I mean, we, we yeah, are. I would, I would agree with that. We, we've been entrepreneurial since the birth of the state. I mean, obviously, I wasn't here then, but. But but this is this is in Iowa's blood. This is not mm-hmm. something new. We did not just import it from somewhere. Yes, and, and, and I think that's very much the case. And, and we haven't even talked about like gateway computers yeah. starting here and th- those types of things that were very Well, interesting. Gateway didn't get the angel money, which is why they went to South Dakota. <laughs> okay. G- gateway was looking for cash to grow, I think, somewhere along the I-80. Uh, I, it might even have been Grinnell. For a, memory doesn't serve me right. But they ended up moving to uh, Sioux City, South Dakota, because they were able to get the tax credits and the money raised uh, to launch. Yeah. 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 Um, and Andy Stoll says in here too that that we're also in a time where it's a lot easier to start businesses than it was in the '80s. Like in the '80s, with um, uh, I would imagine with the internet, you know, enabling those types of things. So that, so there's more activity because it's it's mm-hmm. one reason is that you can see. And I would agree with that as well. What what I think all of this kind of boils up to is I, I don't disagree with anything you said, but I think we're also at a time in in you know space and time and all the the, the activities are kind of coalescing in a way that we can really do something to propel us forward and that's what I hope that we're all building towards and that was kind of the point of the article yeah. article and, and uh, what, what do you guys think Andy I guess you haven't said a lot like what do you think are the uh, next steps um, in relation to this kind of community what should we be focusing on moving forward I think just highlighting what everybody's doing and getting people together because I mean maybe Emma's and I's business might not work out but in 10 years m- one of us might have a great idea and we'll end up working together or, or something like that to where as long as you get people talking to each other, good stuff's going to happen, I think. And, and maybe 20 years ago, that wasn't happening. And like you said, there wasn't Twitter. There wasn't um, any of these social media to connect people. So people were just doing it in their own silos. And I think if, like you guys and social media are breaking down those silos and, and it's kind of cultivating the whole, the whole atmosphere. I think, bang on target, the support structure that exists today did not exist mm-hmm. then. Uh, and even if it existed, it was not known. Uh, so the support structure that just seems to pop up whether in the coffee shops down here or somewhere else um, is what propels some of the uh, activity for, forward. You guys should do like a research project on that. Get an SPN intern on that. Crunch some numbers. Get some graphs out. Get it, some graphs out. Yeah, I want to see like... I want to see a pie chart, a, please. I want to see a line chart of entrepreneurial activity in the Midwest. Over I want to see a TPS I, report on that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's great. How, how do you measure that? Is it number of new starts or is it revenues? Or how, like that, that's part of the problem. You know, a number of tech starts would be a great number and the Secretary of State would have uh, some of that data. Yeah. All because right. those, those, those businesses, I know I registered mine in 91 or 92, uh, just walking over to the SOS's office and saying, hey, want to file for you, a tech You actually name. went to the office? <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was a long time ago. <laughs> well, if you want to register <laughs> yours today, you walk over to the office, you can 
pretty much register your company in about five minutes yeah. still. Yeah, I think I faxed my last one in, but mm -hmm. I had to go get an online service to be able to fax it in. Yeah. And do all that. But although, although if you do walk, it's an experience. So if you're starting a company and you've got your paperwork, it is, it is one of those uh, pride-filling moments you just walk into. A government building, right? I mean, yeah. You give them a sheet of paper, you give them the 50 bucks, and they, they give you your corporate paperwork. It's filed. And no kidding, yeah. man. Very good. They give you your company right yeah. there. <laughs> I'd go in for the high five. <laughs> that, that, I, I certainly hope they would. <laughs> <laughs> Starting a company. <laughs> they should uh, have a Walmart greeter type person yeah, that just gets uh, high fives uh, people when they walk in. Uh, yeah, I, I should have that drone. <laughs> I don't talk a lot about my former career, but it actually was consulting with, with county governments all, all over right. the country, and I don't think I ever got a high five in any of them. So <laughs> I, not to burst your bubble, but I don't think they give you a high five when you come in. But, but I think it's very Emma, awkward if I went in for it and they didn't do it. So. <laughs> I, I have a feeling we're just going to have to walk into the Polk County building one of these days. Yeah. That's <laughs> I, Start up city trip. <laughs> I like that. And, and I, I really think, you know, Iowa is a business friendly state. Like we even give you high fives when you register <laughs> businesses. That's that's where I want to see that go. Um, uh, yeah. So as far as your original point of we should do a research project, I see Danny is commenting it on there. Right. Um, yeah. yeah there, there is a Silicon Prairie map that, that he's put together and you can go there and actually kind of pin your business if you don't have it. That's one way we're keeping track of current starts. Right. I think the historical data from the Secretary cool. of State Makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't know that we have the capacity right now to, to fill it, but I think that would be an interesting intern project or guest post project for someone who's just dying to write a historical piece for Silicon Prairie News. Um, we would love to see that um, uh, for sure. So, any other stories you guys want to talk about today? I know our time is I'm, a I'm, I'm not angry and I'm not uh, huffily walking out, but I got to get to a meeting, so I have to take, uh, I have to bid adieu. <laughs> uh, I, I do need to go. Uh, no problem. Well, thanks for joining us today. We'll let you go, and then we'll, we'll right. wrap up the show. So good to Thank see you, you Tej. Thank you all. Yep. Bye, Tej. Bye. Bye. Um, if you want to learn more about Tej, you can do that at Tej Dewan on Twitter. I'm pretty sure is where he sends people. Uh, Emma, where do where do people go to find out more about you? You can follow me on Twitter. It's E-M-M-Z-Z-U-H, or go to tickly.co to learn more about my company. Very good. How about you, Andy? <laughs> you made Andy.com. That's always easy. Uh, you can find my blog at gwood.me. Uh, Prayercast is produced by John Thompson of Evolve. To find out more about his services, go to dmevolve.com. For more on our show or our sponsor, Delta Dental of Iowa, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash prayercast, or search for us in iTunes. While you're there, how about giving us a review? We'd love to see some more of those. For more on all the things that we talked about today, you can see siliconprairienews.com, and we will see you right back here next week. Thanks, everyone.